So my, my name is Alvin Bouquet and I'm a postdoc researcher at uh, Aarhus University. So my contribution to the GENTOR project was to provide breeders with new tools to predict the um, future performances of their cows in future environments. Um, this project was a collaboration between Aarhus University, Viking Genetics and INRE. So um, resilience and efficiency are two important attributes for the cows of tomorrow. Um, cows must be um, efficient to lower the environmental in impact of uh, the dairy production and uh, resilience also to face more uh, uncertain uh, environments. In a first, um, in a first study, um, we showed that it's already possible right now to select for more resilience in um, today's conditions. Um, so this is feasible based already on, on uh, indica indicators uh, that are already uh, uh, available now. But this implies less genetic gain on milk production, although we can uh, expect some more progress on functional traits. So this uh, selection for uh, resilience on today's condition um, with a bit less progress on, on milk can be seen as an insurance premium that will be paid back if the environment gets more perturbed in, in the future. But the question uh, I was asked by, by breeders was, but how will my, um, how, what is the impact of my breeding strategy uh, right now on uh, the resilience of my cow in future? And uh, this meant that we had to model what is a response to a challenge for those cows. And we focused on the nutritional challenge. So um, this response is quite difficult, complex to, to model uh, because uh, the traits are quite um, highly, oh, they are highly dynamic and they are affected both by the environment and uh, by selection. So in case of feed restriction, uh, the cows will experience trade-offs um, it means that they will have to prioritize certain functions. So for example, lactation versus fitness or reproduction. And what we have to keep in mind that when we select cows, we also change the magnitude of those trade-offs. Um, and the current methods um, we, we use to predict selection response do not account for those trade-offs. Um, so it's difficult to predict the long-term consequences of selection. So to tackle this, prob this problem, um, our idea was to couple two different kinds of models. Um, one mechanistic model that was developed within GENTOR uh, that, we, that was used to simulate some performances and the potential um, trade-offs of cows before and after selection um, based on two important things, their genetic makeup and um, the environment. And we couple this, this model with um, a breeding scheme simulator um, that was used to uh, evaluate how the genetic, genetic makeup of a population will change over time. Um, so for those interested in, uh, I will present this, this, meth this method tomorrow at the WC Gallup. Just to show you the benefit of the approach compared to the standard approach, I will uh, present you a small case study. Uh, we simulated a typical breeding uh, plan uh, of a dairy cattle population with uh, 20,000 cows, 100 sires. For all the cows, we had uh, some phenotypes, so body weight, milk production, um, feed intake, uh, fertility. Um, it was uh, the interval between first AI and, and conception, and lactation efficiency. And we had also information for two resilience uh, indicators which is the level of body reserves and uh, lifetime efficiency. We performed selection in a non-limiting environment and we used a breeding goal which is quite standard, so which is made up of two traits, only two traits, milk and fertility, um, but with a, a, a weight that represents the current balance we have between production traits and uh, functional traits. And we compared our, the, the performances we, we had before and after 20 years of selection um, for selection in a non-limiting environment or um, if the, those ca selected cows in a non-limiting uh, environment were transferred to a, a limiting environment with a reduction in uh, dry matter intake by 
13%. Um, so here I show you the selection response, the annual genetic gain uh, in the table, uh, which is expressed in um, standard uh, genetic um, deviation units. So we have, following this uh, burning scheme, burning goal, a high genetic gain on milk production, which is due mainly to um, a gain on uh, dry matter intake and to a lesser extent to um, gains on, on lactation efficiency. On the graph on the right, you can see the profile of uh, body reserves in gray for the cows before selection and in orange after selection. So to produce more milk, those cows uh, will mobilize also more body reserves in early lactation. And then they will uh, reconstitute a bit more slowly their body reserves. So um, based on that, we, can, we, we could see that the fertility uh, was uh, not really improved in, in this scenario, but altogether the lifetime efficiency of uh, the burning goal was um, positive. Now, if we put the same cows um, selected in a non-limiting environment in a limiting environment, we can see that the genetic gain on milk production it's, is, is much less. Um, especially because with the feed restriction, the, the cows could not fulfill their um, nutritional requirements. So the, the progress we have here is just the progress we got on lactation efficiency. On the right, um, for the body reserves, the black curve, it's um, the body reserve profiles of the cows before selection in the non-limiting environment, and the red curve is what happens uh, when uh, those improved cows uh, are in this limiting environment. And we can see here that there is mobilization of body reserves, but at a point which is quite acute, and the, the cows are not able to reconstitute their um, body reserves to bounce back to the initial level. So we have um, a lower resilience with a decrease in fertility and altogether a decrease uh, in li lifetime efficiency. So in conclusion, so we'll come back to my initial question. Are we heading in the right direction? So I will just bring a few elements here. But uh, the first thing is that it's very important to consider the um, dynamic nature of energetic trade-offs when we um, define some selection strategies. The second thing is that uh, if we put too much focus on production traits today, it will reduce uh, the resilience potential of cows in future. And if we anticipate that we'll have more limiting uh, resources in future, uh, it's a good idea to try to limit those changes in energetic trade-offs over time. And um, finally, all the tools we um, developed uh, will help breeders, I hope, uh, to benchmark um, selection strategies and make more informed choices. <laughs>